In this video, I'm going to give you a full step-by-step -step tutorial on how to use SellerAmp SAS for Amazon FBA in 2025. Everything you need to know steps A to Z, how to use it, what it costs, the different pricing and plans, some tips and tricks. A lot of SellerAmp users don't know that'll help you find a ton of profitable products. Let's get right into it. All right, guys, so we're here on the SellerAmp website and we're going to talk about pricing to start off. So there's two different plans for SellerAmp, getting started as well as getting serious. You can either pay for them annually and save some money or pay for them monthly and pay the full price. Getting started is either $20 per month billed monthly or 16.63 per month billed annually, so 200 bucks, right? As well as getting serious is either $23 per month billed annually or $28 per month build monthly. The main difference between the two is going to be the phone app installs and Chrome extension installs, as well as the scam limits. On getting serious, you get unlimited product scans per month, as well as on getting started, you get up to a thousand right there. So if you're very serious, you might as well go ahead and get getting serious from the get-go, or you can use getting started and upgrade when the time comes. And if you want to save some money from the get-go, you can go ahead and subscribe to our annual plans. And then the link for a two-week free trial, if you want to you know, test SellerAmp out for free, is just going to be in the description as well as on selleramp.com. But there's getting started and getting serious. The main difference between the two is going to be on getting started, the up to a thousand lookups per month, and on getting serious, the unlimited lookups per month. And now you can go ahead and download the Chrome extension or mobile app once you have Selleramp. And let's take a look at our settings to get you set up correctly. And guys, both subscriptions include the mobile app, Chrome extension, and web app right there too. So we're here in settings on selleramp.com. You can do this on your mobile app as well. The mobile app and Chrome extension are very similar and they do the same thing. One's just for online arbitrage and wholesale stuff you're doing on the computer and one's for retail arbitrage. So to start off guys in your settings, really all you're going to customize here is taking a look over here on your buying criteria. This is what I like to have for my buying criteria. Buying criteria you put in doesn't really matter too much. It just kind of affects what the prof calculator is going to show versus green and red. There's nuance on different items, but I recommend having your minimum BSR 0.0%, right? Maximum BSR 1%, although certain categories are bigger and have good product that might have a 2% BSR, for example, and certain categories are smaller, right? And therefore, you know, 1% BSR might be too high, for example, and too slow selling because you want the lower the sales rank, the better. For the most part, though, most good listings are going to have under a 200,000 sales rank. Your minimum profit per unit, I like to have as $3 and your minimum ROI. I like to have as 30% or more. For example, too, there are nice health things if you want to take a look at these and kind of get the exact definitions of these as well. Your additional cost is incredibly important right here. If you're using a prep center, you're going to go ahead and put your prep center cost in here. If you just want to assign a hard MISC fee dollar amount, for example, in here, you can go ahead and do that. Say you have like in-house employees you pay on a per unit basis. And the cool thing is these calculations you can put in here are then gonna show on your seller and mobile app for retail arbitrage and your Chrome extension. So the MISC fee percent, for example, here is where you're gonna go ahead and put in your sales tax rate. So for example, Texas, the sales tax rate is, for the most part is 8.25%. So now you don't need to do mental math in here. So a big mistake a lot of beginners make is they actually count sales tax twice. They put sales tax in the profit calculator as well as in their back end, and then they end up counting sales tax twice, which is incorrect. If you put it in, in your additional costs here, it's automatically going to calculate it. And then the number you put in the profit calculator should not include sales tax because it's already factored in. That's another question I get all the time is how do you calculate shipping, right? And the cool thing is you can put in your inbound shipping costs for FBA in the back end of seller MP at about 70 cents per pound, which is pretty average. It's going to go down as you scale though and get more efficient with your boxes as well. And now the seller and prof calculator is automatically going to count that in as well here too. And then I also recommend having down here in the quick info, I recommend having all of these selected, which is really helpful as well. There's not anything you're going to have to change in these guys to additionally right here, but I do recommend having the show profit, profit margin, ROI, break even offer summary, all that selected. And then all you got to do is go down here and hit save and you're good to go right there as well. So now moving into an Amazon product page, we can take a look at the seller and Chrome extension. So that's what you're going to want to have added to your Google Chrome. That's where you'll do product research for online and wholesale, for example, right here. And now we can see the Chrome extension right here. There's some debate on Amazon Twitter about where it goes, but you can go ahead and customize it right here as well and move it. You can put it in the middle, for example, too. 
I personally like having it on the right here as well. Now we could also drag and drop this in and out as well here, right? And now we can go ahead and see the quick info. So this is where you get the majority of the data for a seller right here. So you can see your eligibility from an ungating perspective if you connect your seller central account. Right here, we can also see the ASIN review count as well as the title on a specific product here. We can see the dimensions and weight. This is very helpful for calculating FBM shipping cost, as well as we can see the description's not super helpful. You could go ahead and open up the Amazon product page. We're already on the Amazon product page. And then say you wanted to look this item up, you go ahead and hit the Google button right here. And then it's gonna go ahead and take us to the Google search. And we could go ahead and see where this item's carried to potentially track down profitably here as well. Right, and then we could also go ahead and open up the SellerAmp web app, which basically just lays out like all the data, for example, right here. So we're gonna dig in all these different sections here, but you can open it up in one place if you want to as well, which is very helpful for like wholesale purchase where you're buying more. You can see all this data nicely laid out here as well, right? We can see the eligibility for ungating, the alerts right here, if there's any like IP complaint history, for example, two right here as well. We can then see the best sellers rank. Remember guys, the best sellers rank stands for BSR, right? The lower the sales rank, the better, right? So like a 10K sales rank is phenomenal here. For the most part, you wanna stay below a 200,000 in most categories. We can see the estimated sales per month. For the most part, you wanna stay above 50 estimated sales per month right here. And then the max cost. So this ties into those settings we just set with the minimum ROI. So if we go ahead and plug in 19.6 at our max cost, we can see that puts us right on that 30% ROI criteria as well, right? Obviously we do want to pay as little as possible. So say we could pay 17 bucks right here, right? Now we can see that leaves $9 profit per sale and then a 51% ROI here, right? And the cool thing is that already takes into account shipping, fees, sales tax, literally everything. So everything's already included here. Because remember guys, we already added that sales tax to the back end on SellerAmp. So this number you put in here should not include sales tax because it's already factored in the back end. A ton of people count that twice by accident as well, right? The offer summary, this is really helpful for seeing what fulfillment type your competitors are. If you can see 20% plus of the sellers on the listing are merch fulfilled sellers, that means you can probably go ahead and merch fulfill that item as well. Moving down here to the ranks and prices, this is really helpful to see kind of an aggregation of all the data for a specific product here. We can go ahead and shift this to see the averages over time as well as just the current as well in terms of the BSR, the current buy box, whether or not Amazon's on a listing, don't automatically avoid a product Amazon is on. You can totally compete with Amazon if they're sharing buy box. I'm gonna show you guys how to do how to check that in a sec here as well. The lowest FBA seller, the lowest FBM seller as well. The keep up BSR drops, don't really recommend paying attention to this, for example, and yet not the net buy box changes either. Right here as well. Estimated time for sale, don't worry about that either. We can see the alerts down here as well. We can see Amazon sharing the buy box here, whether or not it's private label. Sometimes you'll see products that have the private label alert on SellerAmp. Typically what that means is just it's a low competition product. If it says private label, you do need to verify whether or not the brand is the only person getting the buy box on it right there. IP analysis right here. Whenever you see something that might have suspected IP issues, it'll have an IP alert right up here. Same thing with private label, right? And then you need to determine by taking a look at the chart whether or not there's a big drop in competition or not right here. We can see standard size that contributes to fees. You only got to worry about that because say it was oversized, you would see it reflected in the fees right there as well, whether or not it's meltable and then whether or not this listing has variations. So it's very important to note guys that the VSR does not change for different sizes and colors. What does change is gonna be the data on the chart right here as well. So here we can see basically like a mini keep a chart right here that measures the product performance over time. So not only does SellerAmp show you if an item's profitable today, it's also gonna show you if it's profitable over time. And the way we're gonna take a look at that is gonna be taking a look at the charts right here. This does track ever since the product was added on Amazon. Personally, I recommend primarily looking at the three month data right here. And what you're looking for guys is that the price is not trending down. We can see in this case, the past couple of weeks, it's pretty much been like 41 bucks the entire time. And it's even gone up a bit relative to where it was around like 25 bucks in mid December, but largely for a while, it's been like 40 to 42, right? We can also see the sales rank is not super high and it hasn't been super high. It's been in that like 5k to 10, 15k range for a while right there, which is excellent too. The monthly sold chart is really helpful as well. I don't personally look at this a ton because it wasn't around when I was learning product research initially, but it doesn't hurt the more monthly sold you see in here. But like, for example, taking a look, the main way I tell velocity is gonna be the offer count movement on a product right here. So this purple line here on the bottom chart, we can see it's nicely moving 
listings you want to avoid are going to be very blocky. Listings you want to you know, consider going ahead and purchasing as long as they're profitable and have good sales history, have a lot of good activity and offer count movement, which is what we can see perfectly right here in that offer count number changing. I get asked all the time how much competition is too much competition on a specific product. There's great listings with 50 sellers and terrible listings with two sellers. And it all just depends on how much offer count movement you see on a listing and what the trend is. If the offer count shooting up, the price is probably trending down, unfortunately. But if the offer count, aka the seller count, the competition is stable like it is on this listing or trending down like it's starting to do as well, the price is probably pretty stable or going up, which means it's not too much competition on a specific listing as well. And we can filter that over time too. Additionally, right here. Now, this is super important here. If you want to see a full breakdown of the Amazon fees right here, we can see uh, all the different profit and ROI on a specific product and the total fees. Where a lot of beginners go wrong is calculating merchant fulfilled cost as well, guys, is what they'll do is they'll just subtract the merchant fulfilled shipping from this profit number, thinking this is how you calculate the merch fill numbers. That is absolutely incorrect. What you want to do to get the merch fill numbers, guys, is actually toggle this from fulfillment type FBA to fulfillment type FBM here. And then what you need to do is plug in the FBM shipping cost for the FBM cost right here. If you want a guideline of what that looks like, just go ahead and screenshot this. This is also a free guide we have for you guys at howtofbm.com, which is the domain howtofbm.com. Or you can go ahead and screenshot this right as well, which is going to be your estimated FBM shipping cost relative to the weight. Right, and the way you get the weight is you just go up here, take a look at the quick info right there, and you can see the weight on this listing. So this weighs like over one pound, so it's going to be like ten bucks, for example. We can see this listing here, FBM, it's a forty percent ROI, and FBA, it's a fifty percent ROI. So this is actually more profitable FBA compared to FBM. Listings that tend to be more profitable FBM compared to FBA are going to be listings that are above twenty bucks but below one pound from a weight perspective. But you don't know till you calculate it, and so many beginners miss out on profitable leads by not running the FBM calculator correctly right there, which is so, so important to go ahead and take a look at that, guys, and then make sure you plug in that FBM cost. A lot of people forget to do that as well. So that's the FBM profit calculator as well. You can also calculate bulk quantities. So say you buy like 17 of this, we'd see the exact cost, the exact total profit, and the exact sales um, for that right there, which is pretty helpful for Burke purchases as as well. If you want to take a look at the variations feature, it's in beta. Personally, when you're taking a look at variations, I would really just recommend looking at the unique chart on a per variation basis. But we do have some good stuff in the variations beta and more coming soon on that as well. You can go ahead and add notes to different ASINs, which is pretty cool too. So say this was like, this was on sale during Black Friday, currently out of stock something like that. You can go ahead and tag that ASIN, take a look at it in the future here as well. You can go ahead and add in discounts. Personally, the way I like to add in discounts though, guys, is going to be doing math within the prof calculator. So say I need to take off like a 10% coupon. I just go ahead and add that in right there. Say there's like a you know 9% discounted gift card here. We go ahead and take off that as well, which is really cool to go ahead and calculate that in there too. You can do literally any type of math in there in the prof calculator, which is really, really helpful too. As, as well. We can also do those percents too, which is very helpful as well. You could also just plug in on the discounts right there too, as, as well. Now, what most people think the best way to do product research as a beginner, guys, is just going to random websites and look at the clearance sections. I don't recommend that for beginners. That's known as manual sourcing. What I recommend for beginners is what's called storefront stalking, aka looking inside the other storefronts of other Amazon sellers you're competing with on winning products you see on our channel, for example, and then taking a look and finding their best winning products from there. So the way we're going to find good seller storefront stock is just taking a look at the winning products you see in our videos, guys. And we can see we want sellers that have lots of reviews, for example, right here. So we can see like pretty much like, yeah, like this seller's got eight reviews, right? Anything above like 10 typically is moving well here. So we can take a look at like this seller right here. And then we can go ahead and see all their different brands they carry, right? All the different categories they carry. And we can go ahead and filter into the different ones too. And the items that show up at the top of their storefront are going to be their fastest selling products here. So now we can go ahead and see as long as it's got a good sales rank, right? We can go ahead and probably open that up and take a look at it, right? In this listing, we can see 6K rank. We know people are making money on that. 2K rank, we know people are making money on that. And I know Amazon's on some of these guys, but you want to open these up and take a look for good variations that Amazon isn't on. For example, too, like for example, this listing we can see 31K rank. 
very nice stable price here. We can see looking at that orange FBA line, a lot of FBM people on this listing too, which is great as well. So storefront stocking is the best way to find products as a beginner. And typically what I'll do for storefront stocking is find a winning product. You can see tons of examples on our channel, then go ahead and open up the storefronts of those sellers and then dig in and filter into my favorite brands that I see. Obviously, when you're a beginner, you don't yet have favorite brands, but what you want to be taking a look at is stuff that sells quick, low sales rank, right? And then reviews help too. And then we can see high estimated sales per month, other third-party sellers on the listing. We can see a bunch of them right here, right? Pretty low competition right there. Bunch of third-party sellers right here. And then we can go ahead and take a look at that, right? And that's so much more efficient than going to random websites and look through the clearance sections as well, because you don't yet know what a good product looks like. You don't have the spidey sense yet. You build that over time. And the way you do that is you look at pre-vetted listings we already know people are making money on. And the way you're going to do that is storefront stock in there. Switching to another item right here, guys, another feature of SellerAmp I use every single day is going to be the Google Sheets feature to organize your products here. And what that kind of boils down to is all the time, especially when you're a newer seller and really forever, you're going to find listings that are pretty good. They're just not quite there or they're totally profitable. They're just out of stock on the supplier's website. And so many beginners will just keep it moving and just never come back to those items. But experienced sellers organize those listings using the SellerAmp Google Sheets feature. So the way you're going to do that, guys, is if we take a look at this listing, we can see it's buy boxing at $38 right here, right? And then we can see over on Walmart, it's going for about 18 bucks right here. So if we plug in 18 and then sale price at 38.64 where the buy box is, right? That's going to leave $5 profit per sale and a 26% ROI. Now this listing has a good sales rank. It has good profit. The problem is the ROI is not quite there. So what I could do in this case is I could one click export this out to an almost good spreadsheet in SellerAmp. It's really easy to set up. We have a full tour on our channel here. And now this data is going to automatically export here and we can see December 28, 2024 here. And we can go ahead and add in a little note on this product here and then come back to take a look at this listing and see if it becomes profitable in the future. Now a little pro tip, I do actually have a tip and trick to make this product profitable here. And the key is on Walmart, we can actually submit our sales tax permit, which is basically a reseller permit, which is really easy to get on your state's website. Just make sure you follow the rules to get it. There's CPA YouTubers that have videos that show you how to do that. So I have 5% sales tax currently factored in. So now I can just take off 5% right here. And now this listing becomes profitable. Now, the cool thing is I can also purchase a discounted gift card off Card Bear and save another five, six, seven percent on Walmart. So say I get, you know, five percent off with the discounted gift card here, we can go ahead and juice the profitability even more. So to most people, this listing looks like an almost good product. To me, it does look like a profitable lead as long as I can see good offer count movement on the chart here as well. And we can see in this case, yeah, like literally, like this had no sellers for a while, and I can see the price has been nice and stable for the past couple, you know, week or so right here. And then it was even higher in the past too. And I can see like people have made money on this listing. We can see good offer count movement here. And we can see now this listing becomes a nice profitable item, but so many beginners miss out on that profitable stuff because they're not taking advantage of that right there and discounted gift cards and using a reseller certificate. You can just Google how to get tax dumped on Walmart. There'll be a direct link right there as well. And so many people just miss stuff like that. And the seller of Google Sheets is a great way to organize your leads. I'd recommend having like an almost good spreadsheet, an out of stock spreadsheet, and then also, you know, spreadsheets for your specific favorite suppliers too that you're going to build over time there as well. Then if you want to see all this data nicely laid out like this, there's also the web app right here, which kind of organizes it nice right here. But if you haven't yet already, get a two-week free trial of SellerAmp on our website, selleramp.com. If you have any questions about SellerAmp, let us know. We talked about the Chrome extension in this video, the mobile app for retail arbitrage for scanning products in store. It's the exact same way. You can go ahead and download that too. It's included in the same subscription right there. And I also recommend having our brand new SellerAmp QVS Chrome extension as well, which is a separate Chrome extension that's included in our main subscription here that you can use for your Amazon search page sourcing. It's literally Free, and it just goes ahead and aggregates this data right here as well, which is super helpful on that too. And that's you know free, including your seller subscription. So you can get the main seller amp extension for the prof calculator as well as seller amp QVS 
for the Amazon search page sourcing data aggregator right here, which basically pops us up and shows you a bunch of helpful data on a specific listing when you're searching products on Amazon. So you had a good brand like in there, you can go ahead and search that right there as well. So I hope this video was helpful, guys. If you have any questions, let me know down below. Get a two week free trial of Seller Amp on our website, selleramp.com. Get the Chrome extension downloaded. Go ahead and get the mobile app as well. You can also get Seller Amp QVS to help out with your Amazon search sourcing as well at selleramp.com slash QVS. As long as you have a Seller Amp account, it'll go ahead and work in your Chrome extension right away. Just a separate Chrome extension right there. So we'll see you guys in the next one. Thanks a lot for watching.